African experts say the continent is keenly watching China's uh, two sessions and studying what lies ahead in China-Africa cooperation, especially in sectors such as uh, peace and security and trade. Professor Peter Kagwanja, who is the president and CEO of the Africa Policy Institute, says that both parties can bank on existing partnerships to make greater progress. His comments come as China's political season kicks off in Beijing. First and foremost, it's important to congratulate China, uh, also to congratulate Africa for basically taking measures that have managed to overcome the COVID pandemic. And the end of pad, uh, COVID pandemic spells an era of hope uh, for both uh, partners because they're going to deepen their engagement, uh, their partnership, their cooperation uh, in ways that started in uh, 1990s and now which is, uh, you know, reaching a very high level. Uh, and, and therefore, we, we do expect that the environment is going to change. Obviously, the COVID-19 has left devastated economies, particularly in many parts of Africa. Kenya has suffered greatly, uh, you know, South Africa, Nigeria, and other pivotal states uh, in China's policy uh, towards Africa. And therefore, the, the, this is the moment of post-COVID reconstruction, which will require more, uh, uh, you know, tightening of uh, relationships, uh, more uh, interactions between uh, the partners so that uh, we get over uh, beyond the devastation uh, that we've suffered from COVID. China is now the, the greatest trainer of African capacities. It has overtaken France, it has overtaken the United States as the destination of, uh, of those who are looking for knowledge and skills. Uh, and Chinese universities have opened their doors. Chinese technical institutions have opened their doors for Africans. There is no other way of imparting knowledge from one civilization to the other except through training. And that is what has been missing. And not just training at the lowest level, but at the highest level of the technical skills. Now, we do also know that investments in Africa, for example, the, uh, um, the, um, the railway system that are being built in Africa, they are incorporating elements or components of capacity building, making it possible for Africans to access the highest of technologies and to ensure that they are self-sustaining in themselves. So we look forward to, uh, to, to China's, um, you know, uh, not only support but cooperation uh, within, again, the framework of FOCAC, which has spelled that industrialization is the topmost priority in Africa-China engagement. Uh, and therefore, it's, it's a great moment for us to, to see that the universities have opened up. Uh, African students can travel to China. Chinese uh, experts and students can also come to Africa. And therefore, people-to-people -people cooperation is going to deepen. And that is the basis of industrialization. This is the age of what we call it post-truth, uh, you know, politics. Post-truth meaning you can tell lies, misinformation, and propaganda as you wish, sometimes through very dignified channels. China, you know, with questions of debt, uh, with Africa, we are seeing them uh, being, po uh, be be being turned into issues of politics, uh, you know, dr drawing a wedge between the Chinese people and the African people. But I think we've seen this before, and we need to get on top of it and move forward. Uh, I, I, I look forward to a huge moment of cooperation as an expert within the FOCAC uh, you know, uh, framework of intellectuals. I am looking forward to uh, giving ideas of how China and Africa can deepen their relationship uh, moving into the future. I am hopeful.